This presentation deals with stability studies on cantilever beams using numerical analysis as well as analytical calculation methods. As an introduction, I would like to present an experiment to you, which is usually performed with the students of our university in the laboratory. On the top left, you see the corresponding structural system. It is a cantilever beam, which is being loaded by a vertical load. Following the displacement at the cantilever tip during the experiment, we see that at first a small vertical displacement occurs and afterwards we see strong deformations going along with bending about the weak axis of the profile in combination with torsional rotations. For the verification of sufficient member capacity, different approaches exist. One of these approaches is the use of reduction factors. Um, this approach is also included in Eurocode 3 and the cross-sectional capacity is reduced using a factor here T to the member capacity and BRD, that is the moment capacity of the member incorporating the effects of lateral torsional buckling. The reduction factor here T is mainly influenced by different imperfections of the member which have decisive impact on the structural behavior. On the lower figure you can see the reduction factor here T for I cross-sectional profile is defined in Eurocode 3 and you see that it depends on the non-dimensional slenderness of a member and that non-dimensional slenderness is defined as the root out of the cross-sectional capacity over the elastic critical moment of the system. A well-known formula for the calculation of the elastic critical moment is shown at the top of this slide. The formula was content of the draft of Eurocode 3 and today it can be found in NCCI documents. It is derived using differential equations, so it's an analytical solution which can be determined, for instance, for a single span girder with a distributed load. As you see, it consists of two factors, C1 and C2, which allow the adjustment of the solution to different moment distributions within a structure. In addition to that, you see that it contains a factor Zp, which defines the load, the position of the load application. Um, on the right side of the slide, the figures exemplify that the load position has decisive impact on the um, behavior with respect to lateral torsional buckling of the member. This solution presented um, may also be applied to cantilever beams. However, um, analysis show that the determination of the factor C2 becomes very extensive. Um, the formulation are very, very extensive and for that reason it is convenient to reform the equation slightly with the assumption that the load application is at the point of the shear center in the first step. That is, Zp is assumed to be zero. In doing so, the equation um, somehow simplifies and we can reform it slightly, introducing a factor k, as you can see in, in the lower formulas of the slide, and the member characteristic epsilon t, which somehow represents um, the primary torsional stiffness in comparison to the secondary torsional stiffness. The NCCI document picks up that formulation for the elastic critical moment and simplifies the factor k slightly by defining it for certain cases of application. You see the table on the right side where um, with the um, parameter eta you define the point of load application within the cross-section and with the 
factor kappa wt you uh, take into account the different member characteristics of structures. The American standard provides the formula shown on this slide for the calculation of the elastic critical moment. At first sight, it seems quite different to the formulations that we had seen on the previous slides. However, if we reform the equation, we can come to the exact same formulation that we had seen. However, the American code only defines one C factor. In, in the American code, it is defined as CB equal to 1.0 for candelaver beams. And in doing so, there is no possibility of taking into account different points of load applications for the structural member. To see how good the different k-factors approximate the elastic critical moment, the solutions of the previous slides are compared to numerical solutions on this slide. The numerical solutions are gained by finite element analysis with beam elements, including seven degrees of freedom, which are able to capture warping torsion and the effect of lateral torsional buckling. In the diagram, the red dotted red curves represent the solution of NCCI document, where we see in comparison to the blue dots, which represent the numerical solution, uh, very, very good agreement is being achieved. Also, the factors, the K factors, which were defined by the figures in Dean 4114, they are able to capture the elastic critical moment well, as we see in the slide. However, the approach of the American standard, where only one factor is being defined for all structural system, that has to then represent things on safe side, which is the case until a member characteristic one over epsilon t of approximately 0.6. Beyond that, we see that for different points of load applications where the load is acting at the upper flange of the eye profile, the solution of the American code can be on unsafe side. As can be seen with the previous slide, the solution of NCCI document very well approximates the elastic critical moment. However, only for the cases where the k-factor is defined in the documents. For other cases, interpolations need to be performed. For that reason, we thought about a new solution in this paper where we subdivided the k-factor into two factors, k1 and k2. k1 gives an accurate solution for the elastic critical moment in case um, the load application is at the shear center, where k2 is a correction factor if load application is not in the shear center, but for instance at the upper or lower flange of the cross section. The factor K2 was derived by fitting off or fitting to the uh, numerical solutions as shown in the diagram, where the blue dots represent the numerical solution of different um, application cases and the plane represents the analytical fitting and description of these solutions. Next to the improvement of the calculation of the elastic critical moment, investigations regarding the member capacity of the candelaver beams were performed. Um, for that purpose, numerical investigations using plastic zones theory were performed. It is geometrically and materially nonlinear analysis, including the imperfections. And you see um, the assumptions for the imperfections on this slide. We have geometric imperfections, L over 1000, as bow imperfection, and common residual stresses assumed for corresponding road IPE profiles. With respect to the material, a bilinear material um, was assumed, which is also common for road profiles. For the cantilever shown on the previous slide, an ultimate loading factor of 1.26 
was determined with, which gives the maximum load to be applied to the structure of 7.56 kN per meter and the corresponding bending moment at the ultimate state of the member of 60.5 kN meter. In, when reaching the ultimate limit state, the cross section is not totally plasticizing. There are local plasticitations in the upper flange and in the lower flange as shown on the right figure and also certain plasticitations in the web. However, parts of the cross section are still in the elastic state and the limit state is reached due to the fact that the critical loading factor, the eigenvalue of, system, of the system, um, considering the partially plasticized member um, reaches the value of 1.0 and it determines the capacity of the structural member. Regarding the effect that the ca capacity is reached due to the eigenvalue of the partially plasticized system gives information that lateral torsional buckling has a decisive influence on the member resistance. Uh, in comparison to that, a calculation according to Eurocode rules with the reduction factors are performed on this slide using the critical moment determined with the new formula and it is compared to the numerical solution using plastic zones theory. Um, you see in the table that different member length are varied and the solutions are compared to each other and we see that Eurocode gives very good agreement to the solution of plastic zones theory. At the end of this presentation, let me briefly conclude. We saw that um, different calculation formulae rely on the same theoretical background regarding the elastic critical moment. We see that NCCI document gives good approximation in this context and we derived a new formula with which we can avoid certain interpolations. We see that the approach of Eurocode 3 seems to reflect the capacity quite well if a proper HLT mod value, a modified reduction factor is being applied. And last but not least, I want to point out that plastic zones theory theoretical approaches will have um, increasing importance in future and um, these methods um, are very well suited to approximate the capacity for lateral torsional buckling of members. Thank you very much for your attention.